Whenever you're making a game, you need a good way of storing data. Luckily, this is where scripted objects come in. They're very small files that can hold a lot of data. It's beautiful, especially if you're making an RPG and you need a lot of prefabs. And if you have a lot of prefabs with a little bit of tweaked variables, you can use scripted objects instead for just one prefab to read from. An example that I use scriptable objects for is when I was making fish. I just had one fish prefab and multiple different types of scripted objects for different fish names, different fish sprites, costs and cell costs and all that kind of stuff. And luckily they're very easy to use. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. First thing that we're going to do is go ahead and create a C sharp script. And I'm going to call this scripted fish. You can call it whatever you want and open it up in Visual Studio. So we're not going to be using coroutines, so we don't need this namespace and we don't need lists either. So we'll remove this one as well. And we're not going to need start or update. Now scriptable objects cannot be put on a game object. So we have to replace mono behavior with scriptable object. And that's already half the work. Now we need to create the variables that we want this scriptable object to contain. So my fish is going to have a name, a sprite, and a cost. So I'm going to create a public string name. And this is going to give me a squiggly line because classes already have an object name variable. So whenever we specify the name, we need to specify this as the name. So we'll just add the new keyword. Next, we'll create a public sprite, call it sprite. And we'll create a public int cost as well. Now scriptable objects are created as assets. So you would create them by right clicking and going to create and there should be a menu item to create your scriptable object. First, we have to create that menu item. To do this, you just go on top of your class and create an asset menu. And the asset menu will take in a file name. So file name is equal to and basically what the file name is, is the default name of the scripted object whenever you create it. So I'll set fish to the default name. And next is the menu name. And the menu name is just the name of the menu item. So menu name is equal to and I'm going to go scripted objects slash new fish. Now what the slash does is it creates a sub menu in this menu. So you could go ahead and save your class and jump into Unity. So whenever you go create, you can see this menu item that says scripted objects and in it says new fish. Go ahead and create your scripted object. And as you can see, the default name is fish. I'm just going to rename it to minnow. And you could see how we have the fields over here. I'm just going to give it its name minnow. And I'm going to give it the minnow sprite and say it costs about seven coins. Now you could come in here and say slash minnow just for each different scripted object that you have. But in our case, we do not have this just showing something you can do. So make sure you saved your class, jump back into Unity, and I'm going to create a folder in my assets and call it scripted objects. I'm going to take this scripted object and drop it in there. And I'm going to create a couple more scripted objects. And I created a long thin banner fish with a different name, sprite and cost and also a blue snapper. Now that we have our scripted objects, we need a way to use them. The way that you would do this is go on to your object that you want to use this scripted object. And if you don't have a script on it, go ahead and create it. But I already have a fish class. So open that up. And in here, I already have a region that folds away my wander code so that you don't have to look at it. And what you have to do in here is just simply serialize a field and it's going to be of type of scripted fish and I'll call it scripted fish. Now that we have the scripted fish, we need a way to take on its data. So we need to set our name, our sprite and our cost. So I'm going to create a start function void start. I'm going to remove this private keyword because it's unnecessary. And now we need our sprite renderer so that we can set its sprite. So I'll go ahead and serialize another field. It's going to be of type sprite renderer and I'll just call it rend. So now you can just go rend dot sprite is equal to scripted fish dot sprite. 
and we can also set the game object's name. So name, the name of this game object is equal to scripted fish dot name. And for now, we'll just debug dot log the cost of the fish. So just go debug dot log costs plus scripted fish dot cost plus coins. Now save your class, jump into Unity, and now we need a reference to this sprite render, so we'll assign that. And we can also select a scripted fish. I'm going to select my long fin banner fish and drag it in here. And now if I hit play, on start you can see that its sprite turns into a long fin banner fish. The object's name is long fin banner fish, and it logs in the console that it costs 90 coins. And indeed on the scripted object it does. And we can even duplicate the fish and in the scripted fish field I'll just drag in the blue snapper scripted object and hit play and you can see that there's a blue snapper and a long fin banner fish and they're quite derpy. <laughs> so that's it for this video guys I hope it helped you out if it did be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And also I'm going to create a video on how to save the scripted object in the scripted fish field and it'll persist between loads. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.